Hello, everyone. Uh, this example is going to go through a demonstration of a workflow that we think is going to become increasingly common over the next couple years or so. Uh, so Pangeo has been part of uh, many groups that have been pushing for these idea of analysis ready data sets. Uh, these are data sets that are in formats that are easy to consume for downstream analysis. And in particular, Pangea has been interested in uh, data sets that are uploaded to the public cloud on services like AWS's S3 or Google's uh, Google Cloud Storage um, in a format that's cloud friendly. Uh, so in formats like Czar um, with a nice metadata uh, attached to them that have been chunked in a fashion that's uh, amenable to downstream analysis. So this presents an uh, interesting challenge or opportunity um, when the different uh, organizations that are generating these data sets uh, upload them to different public clouds or different regions in the same public cloud uh, provider. So in this example, we're going to be doing a analysis on two data sets. Uh, one is Lens, which is hosted on AWS in the US West 2 region. Uh, this is some ensemble of model output. Um, it'll be a, come very clear that I'm not actually a climate scientist, so I don't really know what these data sets are or what the computation is doing, but uh, sorry about that. So first of all, we're looking at lens, and then second, we're going to be looking at uh, similar data from ERA-5, uh, which I think are some actual observations. And we're going to do um, a similar computation on each of these data sets, uh, and we're going to compare the results. Um, one crucial piece, though, is that we want to do the analysis as close to the data as possible. Um, and so what that means in practical terms is we're going to set up compute, a compute cluster in the same cloud region as the data, um, which means we'll need one compute read, uh, cluster in AWS and one compute cluster in GCP. Um, and we'll do this for a couple reasons. First of all, for performance, uh, these machines, the storage machines and the compute machines in the same data region uh, will have the highest bandwidth between them. Um, and second of all, it's also cheaper. So since uh, the data uh, in S3 or GCP, uh, GCS is not leaving the cloud region, um, AWS or Google won't charge us uh, an egress fee. Uh, typically when, uh, when data leaves a cloud region, uh, these cloud service uh, providers uh, charge an egress fee. Um, so moving data around, a large amount of data around is uh, costly uh, in terms of you know, speed, it, it kills your performance, and it also costs you real money or whoever's hosting the data set. Um, so we're going to connect to a couple of uh, DAS clusters here um, that have been set up ahead of time with DAS Gateway. We'll talk a bit about that later. Uh, we'll connect to the uh, gateway on AWS uh, in US West 2, and we'll ask for a new cluster, and we'll connect to it. Um, the only uh, interesting thing here, um, we'll do the same thing for Google. The only interesting thing here is that we're using this set as default equal false keyword. Um, so most of the time when you're creating a client, you know, connecting to a cluster, you only have one DAS cluster. And so you want it to be the global default so that any computation uh, using DAS uh, uses that cluster. Um, in this case, we want to be really explicit about where the computation occurs. Uh, we don't want to be analyzing the lens data set, which remember is host on AWS. We don't want to be analyzing that on the Google cluster because we would be moving around a bunch of data, paying egress fees and all of that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and scale each of these up. The AWS computations uh, quite a bit smaller than the uh, Google one uh, on the ERA-5 data set. So we'll need more workers for the Google one. We'll go ahead and uh, use intake to open up the catalog. Uh, this is just a bit of, you know, it's a data catalog, some metadata on where the, the actual files themselves live. Uh, and we'll go ahead and load up the uh, metadata using this to dask method. Uh, this will bring in the metadata about what this computation does, about the you know, things like the variables available, the coordinates, all of that. Uh, we haven't actually loaded any uh, large amount of data, though, just the metadata. Um, using XArray, we can go ahead and select the uh, time span that we're interested in. 
also the variable TP, the total precipitation. That's what we'll be doing uh, the analysis on. Um, and to make it comparable to lens, we have to do a bit of uh, coarsening of the time period just so that they match up, they're more comparable. Okay, uh, and for the actual analysis, the computation we're interested in, we're doing a histogram. So these are the bins that we're gonna use, and then we'll use the X histogram package. Uh, we'll pass it the array here and do a histogram over longitude, and then take the mean over time of that result. Um, so this is going to give us back uh, some results. It's going to be a, um, an X-ray data array, and it's going to be a, a small result. So we started out with a 1.5 terabyte raw data set, uh, and we've reduced that down to a small result, uh, 288 kilobytes. Um, and this, you know, we're quite fine moving that tiny result uh, over the public internet since it's so small. Um, so we can go ahead and ask uh, that, ask for that result. Um, and we're, again, being explicit about where the computation happens. This is the Era 5 data set. It's on Google. So we want to make sure to use the Google clients to do that computation. Um, so this is a future. So eventually, when the computation finishes, there will be some uh, you know, X-ray data array out on the cluster. Um, that's, that's the uh, result here that this future is pointing to which later on we'll actually bring it back to our client machine here, which is just a, uh, which is just my laptop. Okay, we're gonna do the same computation here on the uh, lens data, which is hosted on AWS, remember? Um, and this, uh, we're using intake ESM to, it has a bunch of neat things, but in this case, we'll just find, you know, where's the actual URL that we need here by searching for it. Um, we can go ahead and grab that URL out and use S3FS and X-Ray and ZAR to load the data set. Okay, so that's the uh, lens data set. We'll select the precipitation variable and then do the same histogram here. Uh, we're only doing it for the first ensemble member. There's something like 40. Um, it doesn't really matter. The, they're very similar. So you could do the same thing for all of them, but they're very similar. There's not much variation, at least in this uh, aspect. And then we do the same computation. So I'll bring up the uh, dashboards here. The AWS one's actually started already. Um, the GCP one takes a while for DAS to actually schedule it, um, just since it's such a large computation. Um, you can see the a AWS one has already finished um, and the, the uh, Era 5, which is happening on GCP over here, is uh, churning along. So loading in chunks of data, um, going ahead and doing, you know, the, the selecting the bits, the get items. Uh, there's some digitized, so that's our histogram, taking the mean after that. Um, so an, a nice big computation that we're spreading out over our 150 or so workers to get the final result. So jumping back to the notebook here as that wraps up, um, these are both futures, which we can go ahead and ask for those concrete results. Um, so they just finished. This was uh, you know, blocking here until it finished, uh, finished uh, right as I ran it. Um, and now we have back these uh, you know, concrete uh, X-ray data arrays uh, that are the um, actual results here, the small you know, kilobytes large result, which we go and go ahead and plot and compare. And you know, if you're, um, if you're familiar with this stuff, you know, maybe these plots are interesting uh, for me, you know, I see they're somewhat similar, somewhat different. So I don't really know what to make of them, but, um, I'm more interested in, you know, what kind of computation we're able to, uh, to enable here. Okay. And then as far as cleanup goes, so we can just close our clients, uh, this will, uh, free up all of our, all of the resources that we used, um, and things will auto scale all the way back down. So you'll be consuming minimal, uh, cloud resources now. Um, behind the scenes, so like I said, I'm not a climate scientist or anything like that. Um, I do want to talk a bit about, you know, the infrastructure that made this possible. So in line with Pangeo's, you know, uh, philosophy you know, of like open architecture, things like that, um, we uh, have all of the uh, infrastructure to set this up uh, in the GitHub repo, which I'll show in a minute, but uh, very briefly, the idea is we're using uh, Terraform, which is a cloud resource manager, um, to set up the Kubernetes clusters. So we have a Kubernetes cluster running in AWS and a Kubernetes cluster running in Google uh, Cloud Platform. And on top of that 
Kubernetes clusters, uh, we use uh, Helm to install Dask Gateway. And so that's how we get our Dask clusters on top of the Kubernetes clusters. And we can connect to those Dask gateways from our, our client machine, which in this case is just a laptop, um, which will let us do the things like you know loading the metadata, playing around, getting a feel for the data set, um, and all of that. Um, and then once we go to actually do our computation, we'll we'll do our compute calls uh, that will use uh, X-Array and Dask to do the uh, computation on the cluster using libraries like S3FS, GCSFS, and Intake to load the data, the, the actual czar files, um, onto the workers. And then X histogram to do the actual reduction. Okay, so we've got this setup here where we can uh, kind of mirror uh, the you know, compute infrastructure uh, on both AWS and GCP, and then connect to each of those from our client machine, which can be living anywhere. Okay. So like I said, um, all of these resources here for the setup is available in this uh, GitHub URL. It's uh, Pangeo data slash multi-cloud demo. Um, so if you want to you know, use uh, the components there to build out your own, uh, own infrastructure, your own deployment for your own problems, uh, feel free to take all those uh, resources and run with them. All right, thanks so much.